How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and this is a one-off video because I sort of ran out of time on the project I was working on. So we're going to be talking about something rather, I thought, thought-provoking that recently I stumbled into. So I was looking for sort of customizable link shortener software. If you know what Bitly is, you have a pretty decent idea of what I was looking for, except I wanted one that I could actually customize and run on my own web server, right? So there are a couple of options out there and I was looking at what each, you know, which, what what were the features that each of them provided, right? And uh, the first one I, I ran across, yeah, pretty decent. And then I checked out the second one. And then the immediate thing I noticed was that a fair amount of the documentation surrounding it was in Chinese or some, lang some ch language that looks like Chinese that I have no idea how to pronounce, how, how to read it. Obviously, I, I don't speak those languages. And the thing was, you know, I immediately dismissed its merits because of that. So this is something that 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 happens I guess you could say and I've noticed it in other areas as well and I think it often leads to this disproportionate bias against you know people who perhaps don't or perhaps would otherwise get the benefit of the doubt and this happens probably more than you would think so another area that this happens with for me sometimes is when people don't do not speak English very well you know obviously it's a second language for them one of the problems that I have is is rather than seeing their lack of understanding of the language as you know a learner learning the language I see it more as them being ignorant them being idiots them being stupid when that is seldom the case actually and usually it has more to do with them not being able to speak the language as well because it was not their native language and it, it, once again it introduces that sort of bias that I think is actually detrimental because it, it's more likely that you'll no longer give them the same benefit of the doubt that you would to somebody who was a native speaker, right? So like if we took two people, two candidates, and we said, we're going to give you an equal opportunity for this position, but then one candidate, I do not like their English. I think their English makes them look stupid, even though they might actually be more qualified. Um, what am I going to do then? I'm going to probably choose the person who is more or who is better spoken simply because of their English skills, regard disregarding the other ones, even though they might have actually been better for the position. And then the same goes for software. Like, let's say you're trying to get your software to an international marketplace. Uh, you want to market it in other countries. How do you get them to adopt it in those countries where perhaps the language that your program is localized in is not the native language of that country? So, the, like, here's another example. When it comes to antivirus software, there are quite a few solutions out there on the market. I personally use the one that's in Windows. And one of the reasons for this is simply because you look at other products like uh, Kaspersky, or Casper Sky, and it's made, the developers are Russian developers. And the thing is, you know, I, I'm kind of wary about what kind of influence the Russian government might have on them as a company. And the same would happen for Chinese software. Uh, so I'm worried about what influence the Chinese government or the Russian government might be having on these software companies. And should I really trust it on my system? Do I really want antivirus software that potentially the government of a foreign country has a bigger hand in than is being sort of let on? And, and it doesn't matter if it's not happening. The problem is the perception that it might be happening. Uh, that fear can sort of drive potential customers away. Obviously, it doesn't apply to everybody by any stretch of the imagination imagination, but it is one of those biases that I have come to a realization happens quite a bit more than you might think in your dealings with people on a, an international level, which is what happens a lot here on the internet because there are the, the connections that we can make uh, go much broader than any other time in history, really. Um, you know, you can instantly communicate with somebody who is halfway across the world. This was simple, This was a thing that was simply not possible, you know, 100 years ago. So well, maybe it was a little bit, little bit more than 100 years ago, but especially not to this extent, like making a call halfway around the world, uh, that would cost a fair amount of money so and that's just just something that I've been thinking about and I think it is valuable to you too especially if you're somebody who is trying to get a piece of software out into the the global marketplace of software or a game for example or your your videos for example anytime you're trying to communicate cross national borders so to speak I think this is a bias that it's important to, to take into account when trying to market yourself you know it, it might not be fair um, but 
but I think it most certainly is there. Could we do more to counteract it? Probably, but at the moment we simply have to sort of deal with the reality of what is in the now. So yeah, I, I hope you found that somewhat thought provoking. I've been thinking about it and uh, since, since I don't have time to do anything else at the moment, my current project was not finished. I will hopefully get that out tomorrow. It should be a don't starve video. Uh, so instead I did this. The game in the background, by the way, in case it caught your fancy, is called Zombiddle Remonstered. So it's a free to play clicker kind of game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching as always and hope to see you next time.